Hello everyone, welcome back to Learning Curve Acres. It's the third weekend in November and as you can see, winter is most definitely here. It was minus 13, so that for American people that's 13 degrees below the freezing point of water. Because that's how we do it up here in Canada. Anyways, minus 13 this morning, so quite chilly. And, whoops, sorry Fred. And you can see that the chickens are a little restless. We've put some straw down. Well, straw, old hay, actually. Uh, for them to have something to walk on that won't hurt their feet too badly. And we've also done a couple other little things just to try and help make things a little easier for them. Hey, Fred. You're almost a year old. Eh? Hey? Hey, my winter chicken? Hey, baby. Really? Okay. You don't want people knowing your age? All right. Okay. Hi, George. Yeah, run away. So, we were a little late on getting some stuff done around here for the chickens. We've, this is our, our hay barn. It's where we keep the hay that we put out for them. As well as under the tarp here is a bunch of straw. And the chickens will come in here and they, they like to kind of play around in there. Give them a spot out of the wind. We took some old plastic and we covered over the window so that it'll help prevent any drafts inside. And then yesterday, we were a little late in doing this, but better late than never. This is what we jokingly refer to as the atrium. For the chickens so we've got lots of hay down in here and then it is literally just some the poly tarp that pla cheap plastic oh. and we just attach it with a couple boards on top so that they have a place to go that is out of the wind but this is also the south side of the coop so it actually gets a little warmer inside now we usually try and have this down before the snow falls so that it holds the 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 uh, plastic down and creates a seal across the bottom I'll probably be coming out here in a little bit and just taking some of this snow and putting it on top of of the uh, plastic to hold it down. I had tried to do that here yesterday, but it was literally just a couple handfuls that I was using, so it didn't work too well. So we have it open on this on both ends so that they can have a quick way of escaping if they feel the need to. And then they just quite often we'll lounge in there. We also provide for the chickens this little area. This was originally a cold frame that I had for hardening off plants. And you can see Eartha here in the... Nope, that's not Eartha, that's Nell. Sorry, Nell. But we've got her here at the doorway don't know how well you can see her because she's so dark. And there goes Mr. Fluff. They go in, we throw in straw. I usually try and keep it somewhat cleared off so that I can uh, they can get some light. Because these are doors with glass inserts on top. And this just allows them somewhere else to just go, get out of the wind. And it's a little bit warmer. Something else that's that we do, we do have the greenhouse open for them all year round. But we do try to keep the door somewhat closed. It was frozen shut this morning. Hi. Yes, Guinness. 
Yes, hi. Yeah? Yeah? There's Gillis and there's Tuppence. Yeah. These two don't really have names. But down here, which was for the quail last year, this is where we have our girl horse and our little Keats. And the Keats have learned that this box is warm, warm enough to keep the water from freezing. And so, as you, as you see here, this little one is just sitting on the edge of it to keep warm, which I think is quite smart. And then we have our quail over here. I still have to make another heated box. Well, I need my husband to help me make another heated box. But they're, the quail are actually, oh, hi. the quail are burrowed down into the straw in here. And then they have their food and water. And we just take these blankets from the reuse center and we cover it up at night so that it's closed on three sides. This gets covered up at night, closed on three sides. And then we have a couple nesting boxes which need to be cleaned out. And they've covered their food tray in some lots of dirt, so I gotta wash that. So I do have a water dish here as well, but it is, sorry, it's partially frozen right now. So I do come out quite often, I break up the ice. And then next time I come out, I'll bring fresh water. Now, you can't see this because it's on the hand that I'm holding the tablet with. Let's see if I can move this. Hi, chickadee. Hi, baby girl. Yeah. So she flew up onto my hand and she was trying to peck at the screen as I was videoing. Hey, sweetheart. But mommy doesn't have any food for you right now. What you doing? But this little girl, she's part Silky and part Ericana and part some other Bantam breed. And she is just so sweet. Hey, aren't ya? You're just such a sweetheart, aren't ya? So, I'm looking forward to when... Oh, here. There. That's a, now we get a better view of you. I'm looking forward to when this little girl starts to lay eggs. I don't know if they're going to be green like the eggs that she hatched out from. Or, or if they're going to be the tiny little buff colored eggs that the silkies lay. But it will be interesting. She's got the blue beak and the blue feet of a silky. So I'm really hoping she's got more silky traits. Hey, Tuppence. This is one of our matriarchs. She's probably my one of my second oldest hens. Quite sweet. And there's probably my oldest here. With, with Betty. This is this is Eartha. Hi, Eartha. So, anyways, I just thought I'd give you a quick view of what's going on here and a quick update. I'm sorry. It seems like I'm always doing this. I'm always apologizing because it's been so long since I did a video. But I swear you blink and a month is gone. But I hope everyone's having a great month of November and taking care and we will talk to you soon. Bye-bye.